Driving down here this morning, it's a quiet Sunday morning, and it's very industrial. It's very, uh, it's it, it's certainly not pretty. It's not it's not built to be easy on the eye. Right through the winter, we come down as well, kind of keeping a, keep an eye on what's what's happening. Normally, I find going down around 10 a.m. in the morning or thereabouts, you have a good chance of maybe seeing the first hunt of the day. It is pretty interesting for for such a, an apex predator to be basically in the city. Getting through the winter alive is is uh, is the main thing. It's it's harsh, you know. They've got to find their own food. They've got to kill their own food every day or every other day at the worst. And of course, the weather can be uh, the weather can be very much against that. Just a bit fiddly to set it up. It's a Swarovski scope, so it's good quality. And Get a pretty decent look at them, hopefully. And uh, there we go. They're 100% safe there. They're probably safer than if they were on a, a cliff face in, in the middle of nowhere in County Wicklow or Kerry or something. One of the things I love about this particular pair is that they're in the city, they're, they're close to where I live. Uh, Normally you have to go to, you know, places that are inaccessible or hard to get to and then you might see the birds or you might not. But uh, this pair of falcons live in Dublin. If you come looking at wildlife or, you know, falcons maybe in particular, for my case, there tends to be long periods where not a lot happens and consequently end up looking at the chimneys for hours and hours. Um, even though there's quite nice scenery if you look the opposite direction there's like seeing the mountains and everything but I spend the whole time looking at a disused power station. Yeah, I think one of the more interesting aspects is if you talk to people they will tell you they remember them there from their childhood but in fact they physically weren't there for their childhood because they were only built in the in the late 1960s but apparently they went up very very quickly and I suppose one of the strange things is if you're going up today people would probably object to them uh, and now the same people including myself uh, want to see them kept. This is a male peregrine falcon. So this is what we have living up here in these towers behind us. What you're looking at is probably the fastest creature that has ever lived on planet Earth. They're designed for speed. You can see they have these lovely long pointy wings and quite a short tail compared to their body size. And the idea with these birds, they go very high and they dive from the heavens basically down on prey below them they form this beautiful kind of teardrop shape where they're incredibly aerodynamic they have special nostrils called tubercles that allow them to breathe at a normal rate when they're reaching these speeds these are speeds about 200 miles an hour their eyesight is also another thing that is really really spectacular and there's, there's nothing that we can sort of compare it to in, in our own lives I think human beings see about sort of maybe 20 images per second, but for a falcon they see about 60. So the, the world kind of moves a bit slower for them and it means that when they're diving at these incredible speeds, they can react, they can reach out a claw to catch the bird, or usually when they're going that fast, they hit the bird with a clenched foot and they're going so fast as it is, it can kill the bird automatically. This is a bird that also came very close to becoming extinct during the 50s and 60s through the use of the pesticide DDT. And ever since the peregrine has really become one of those kind of sexy conservation ambassador animals like a snow leopard or a polar bear. Now, at the moment, their numbers have soared back up again and they're healthier than they possibly ever have been because they're using man-made structures like these to nest in. They've done very well in cities all across the world. I mean, if you think about somewhere like New York, that environment, all the skyscrapers and pigeons is pretty much like a, a canyon, which would be their natural habitat. So they've been incredibly successful. London City, uh, Dublin, we've got two pairs. We have one here and we have one further in the city centre. So that's part of the reason that they're doing so well is that they've adapted to man-made areas. With birds of prey in the wild, usually 75% of young birds will die in their first year. They've quite a high mortality rate. You know, we often think that birds like these and predators like lions and tigers, that it's easy for them, but it's actually very difficult to hunt in the wild. And a bird like this would maybe have a kind of 
one or two out of ten uh, success rate. I think the people of Dublin want to see them saved. It's one of the issues that I've got the most response from in my 20 odd years on the council. If you look around, you see this is one of the most sort of splendid parts of, of Dublin. We have the Liffey on one side, we have the sea on the other, we have the Irish uh, Nature Park around. And it's a place that I think in any other country in the world would be sort of developed and enhanced for recreational activity. But there's a rich industrial heritage in this area that isn't celebrated or marked at all. And I think the chimneys could be the centrepiece of an industrial museum that was down here. There are so many ways in which we could use the chimneys to enhance people's appreciation of the area. 2,000 years you've got boats coming down here, kings coming down here, Vikings coming down here. The history is immense. As you come in the plane from uh, abroad from years away, the first thing you see are the chimneys, it's an iconic place. My view would be to keep them, possibly keep them, or if they're gonna, if they're gonna take them down, replace with something spectacular. There's loads of ideas out there. There's been a the catapult uh, between the two, as with John Tierney of Irish Water being uh, slung out to sea, and this was probably the craziest one that, that I saw. There's been circular restaurants rotating around the chimneys. Uh, there's been a bridge across uh, from one to the other. There was a, a harp. Uh, strings going from one chimney to the other, there's, there's loads. The imagination's great. This area is worth preserving and it's worth, you know, enhancing for the people of Dublin. I can't imagine what it would be like if they weren't there. I think it's kind of nice that the Falcons have settled there. You know, we've accepted this bit of man-made monstrosity in the middle of our nature and um, it would be nice to keep them. I think they're an anchor for the city. Mm. I think no matter where you are, you can usually see the towers and it gives you a context. They're important for Dublin, I think, in a funny way, even though they're not gorgeous. What is gorgeous? <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the boulder. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I think it's okay for a city to have a place that's a bit ugly. I think that's okay.